Have you ever heard of journey mapping? It's a way to evolve your personal and professional life in a way that's fun and intuitive, yet effective and skillful. And I have invited the founder of journey mapping to an interview today, and she's actually going to give us a little bit of an experience. Now, before I bring her on, let me read you her bio so you have some um, context for, for her background. Her name is Naraya Stein, and she's a creative journey mapping. She has 30 years of experience as a life coach and professional facilitator. She is a strategic planner, a massage and hakomi therapist, and a Kripalu yoga teacher, and she specializes in working with women. Naraya, thank you so much for doing this interview. George, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I understand that you have some slides to kind of walk us through journey mapping, so I'll let you take over, and uh, I may come in with a question here or there. Yeah, I would love that. Please, at any point, feel free. Um, I'm going to go right into a screen share. Great. So I want to tell you a little about journey mapping. And this truly, for me, is bringing together different parts of my life and my experience. Having lived at a spiritual community, yoga community, for 10 year years, I have a very strong foundation in yoga practice and yogic lifestyle. Um, but also a really strong appreciation for, um, we'll talk about like the, the strategic planning part. So this is a woman's approach to visioning and strategic planning. It's about skillfully yet organically, creatively, spiritually evolving your personal and professional life. Um, I did a, uh, collage this picture together for myself because to me the path is so symbolic of the path of life, the path of our career or life direction, um, our spiritual path. Um, and the that colorful kind of aura is really about listening to the invisible parts that help to guide us. So it relates to our energy, our heart, our body you know, even nature and what's around us, but it's listening not just through our minds, but through all these different signals that guide our lives. So directly, uh, 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 just going further on this, um, I think this is very much a woman's approach because I think uh, and it's not just women, but it's the feminine side of men. So I think that I have uh, worked with male clients. I think the more a guy is developed in his intuitive, feeling, perceptual sides that are not just his intellect, the more he will resonate with journey mapping. I have, when I've done courses, I've sometimes had up to a third of the men there. And I think that the men are craving this too. Um, so journey mapping very much draws upon your spiritual and emotional intelligence and your longings. So I really encourage people to bring to the plate those deeper feelings, even the emotions, even if they're sloppy or intense or coming out because there are what I call gold nuggets underneath that. And so there's, a, um, there's deep inner knowing underneath all of that. Um, but I'm also a huge fan of bringing that masculine part to the plate, which is strategy and the intellectual knowledge, best practices. In fact, I'm one of these people who can get a little triggered if somebody is just following their heart or wanting to just do things based from the inside because I feel like there's a balance of working with our inner flowy, more emotional realm with also connecting to the world around us and all the wisdom that has been here that people have found from trotting the path. So we work with both. 
And I, as a yogi, I've had a practice for over 30 years. And to me, yoga is a lifestyle. It's not just my yoga practice. But if I were to narrow that down in some ways, it's about kind of what lifts the energy. How do we build energy in our lives? And what drains it? And journey mapping, and this is as a coach, I'm very much tracking the things that shut you down, the things that open you up, because our lives are complex, they're full, there's just, there's a lot of levels to it. But um, when we do the bigger journey mapping assessment, we're wanting to look at what are those things that might be draining you in their li- in your life. It might be relationships, it might be belief systems, it might be what you're doing or relationships at work, but those are a significant factor that zap your energy uh, because if we just focus on uplifting things, you can't replace the energy that's going down the drain. So that's something we look at. And journey mapping also works with, which I love, which are these more mindfulness practices. So presence, synchronicities, intuition, these are the things that happen in the moment. But if you're not present to the moment, if you're just on your strategy or you're just in your practice or caught up in an emotional thing, you're not going to be present to what crosses your path or those inspirations that bubble up. And they're very important part of the process. Um, I sometimes call journey mapping a synthesis work because it, Uh, I'm going to show you the next slide. It's bringing together these different aspects. um, And we use it both for creating an assessment as well as the path forward. But I also feel it's synthesis because literally as women, as human beings, um, we are body, mind, spirit. How do we use all of our perceptual faculties in our everyday lives as we show up in the world. And related to that is it's not uncommon that some of the clients I've worked with have been on some kind of path for a number of years. So I find that people are pretty ripe and fresh to bring together, to make a connection between these aspects of how we function. So it's not all that we can fluidly flow between the emotional intelligence, the intellectual knowledge, that those kind of synapses start to connect. And I'll just go through this really quickly before I give you an experience. Um, So uh, journey mapping is partly, I call a, a holistic approach to strategic planning. And strategic planning might sound very technical or dry to you, but it's actually having worked in organizations, it's a beautiful, beautiful process that steps back and looks at the big picture of any situation. So as you're, you know, I'm also a client of George's, many of us are evolving our businesses online, we have to step back and look at the big picture. What are the elements? What are the pieces we need to work on? What makes sense to work on first? So there's different levels of it. And with journey mapping, um, with clients, I'll work on anything from strictly, say, supporting somebody with a lifestyle, holistic lifestyle pieces, but more common than not, there is a real bridging of work. Uh, For instance, I'm working with somebody right now who um, has her own private practice, is wanting to do more teaching, uh, but she gets really nervous. And so we're starting to work with that in a bigger perspective because that's an element that holds her back from giving her gifts as a teacher. Um, So I'll say more, but this uh, of who I work with, but uh, this can apply to work, to personal, to spiritual and all together. Um, So starting with strategy and actions, which really is our more masculine aspect and As solopreneurs, we really need to engage both our intuitive, our 
you know, relational feminine side with our masculine side that's willing to show up, that's willing to cut through, that's willing to deal with online systems. Um, so strategy and actions is about having clear vision and mission, clear to do's, direction, showing up, following through. It's, it's the showing up in the world and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And at this stage in my life, for me, my spiritual path is very connected to showing up in the world. The right, this uh, wellness side of uh, your, the holistic strategic plan is speaking more to the feminine aspects, body, mind, spirit, emotions, our relationships, our self-care. Sometimes I've even called this um, not just wealth, wellness, but um, kind of about your light, how bright you shine, or um, is what your energy, how high your energy field is. Because when your energy is up, that's when you're a magnet for things. That's when sparks start to happen. So if we push ourselves a lot with the to-do-dos in life, but our wellness is not balanced, it's really hard to pull on our other perceptual gifts that honestly are what, especially as holistic practitioners, give us the edge on the market, but also in truly sharing and channeling the gifts we're here to do. So we have to walk our talk, truly, as holistic practitioners, to live it and to be the channels that we're about. And presence is, as I said before, mindfulness, synchronicity, intuition. Uh, I speak a lot about this, life's guiding signals. I truly feel life is constantly here to guide us I don't think it gives us one signal. I think life tells us again and again and again if we're alert to listen. So you won't miss it, um, but there's somatic body level signals, emotional signals, you know, friends and peoples in our world. There's all kinds of signals coming to us if we're able to stay present and use and digest those. So this kind of gives you a sense of the levels we work. Always when I, you know, homework and after a session with somebody, there'll be clear strategies and actions, a wellness or vibra uh, you know, lifting the vibration piece and, and presence aspects. And what I can say, this is something you might want to digest a little or pause but is when these three aspects come together, it creates what I call, uh, so it invites clear direction, which is a necessity. I honestly, having been someone who's just followed my heart, I couldn't invite you enough to actually do this, having that clear strategy that involves in terms of things like, doing some market assessment, learning about your ideal clients, like starting to look at those concrete things rather than just trusting your internal intuition. I, I won't go off on a riff now, but it's really important. So clear strategy, but then we have a recipe for quantum shift, which is through a combination of the wellness and presence. And what I mean by that is when our vibration is high, when we're feeling good, that's when you, the presence piece kind of taps in and we say, you know what? I think I need to stop at the store today. Like this happened to me the other day. And I was after work. I was tired. I was in ugly clothes. And I bumped into somebody who it was a very important uh, synchronicity that we're going to link up. So where... It's when we're connected to that high vibration that we listen to our intuition, that we jump in, that we take risks. So, and those are the things that lead our path off of a direct step-by-step -step strategy. Because then something comes in that's kind of a little out of the box. And then we're able to go over here because somebody invites us to do a talk or somebody says, I know somebody else you should connect with. And that person inspires me or gives me a little more of how I should present myself. So 
it's, I, I, so I love that kind of layering. So any comments, George, before I jump into our experiential exercise? No, this is great. I really, I really like it. Um, I like that you are integrating both the, because the masculine maybe, or the, or the, or the left brain, and you're integrating the right brain and maybe the more feminine. And then you're also integrating the, the, the grounding of it all, right? The, the sort of the spiritual uh, grounding. So I like this, this uh, integration here. Thank you. Thank you. And to me, it's what speaks to me, like when I relate to my purpose as a human being is when I start using all these things and living all these things, then it becomes alive in my work and my daily life. And I don't think my, feel like my spirituality is something compartmentalized to my practice in the morning. So next we're going to go to a mapping exercise. And just to say I have an assessment process that I call orientation mapping. It's uh, orienting to where, getting a big picture sense of where you are in your life. And the idea is to make it really fun and once again to draw upon different aspects of your knowing. So it's not all coming from your mind. Um, but when I do coaching and we do assessment, mapping might be part of it, but we do so many other levels. Uh, so mapping is just one aspect, but it's an incredible tool. And I am going to invite you, all the listeners, into an experiential exercise that's really simple. It's going to be a four-minute exercise. I really want to invite you to not have to get it perfect. So when I do journey maps, we actually overlap. We have a number of maps to tease out the information through different lenses, and we're looking for overlaps. But the idea is to just, what's the first thing that comes to mind, and to trust that. So... If you don't have a piece of paper, get a piece of paper. You might want to get some crayons or just a pen. And we're just going to do two segments of a two-minute exercise. So the first thing you're going to do is draw a big heart that's going to fill up your paper, kind of like you see on this slide. And the next step is it's an intuitive process of how full is your heart? And I want you, you know how we go, the glass is half full, half empty? That's what this is about. So I want you to just draw in a line. And this isn't just based on today. Like today might be a bummer of a day or it might be a, a good day. But kind of in general in the last month or two in your life, how full is your heart feeling? So you're just going to Make that line, don't judge it at all. This is teasing out information. And then the next step is that you're gonna start with the things that, are, that give you energy in your life. So here are some of the things for me. My yoga and meditation practice, friends and family, the mountains here in Santa Fe where I live, my, I have a really sweet home, I like to hike and dance, I'm uh, having some new spiritual teachings in my life and going through a huge growth spurt, and I'm doing art. So these are all things that really give me energy in my life, and I'm going to give you two minutes to fill in what those things are for you. I'm going to give you a 30-second notice when it's time to finish up. Again, don't worry about making it perfect. So you can begin.
And take another 30 seconds. And you can time, tie up that part. And now we're going to go to the top half of the map, which is to feel into the ways that your heart is feeling empty right now. And again, without judgment, just let, just let it flow. We're human. We're always changing. You know, something that worked before might feel a little lonely now or empty. So just be honest. And really, this is just like a journaling exercise. So some of the things for me, well, I wouldn't be working with George if I didn't want more coaching clients, or I want a life partner. That's a, a biggie for me. More time off to adventure. Um, I go through I'm not enough feelings. And it's I really invite you if there are some key kind of gremlin voices in the head that are uh, themes in your life, that is something to put there because it gets in the way. It's like a, a rose or not, not so fun colored lens that we look through life through. And for me, I'm wanting more collaboration with in my coaching business. I I uh, have so much more fun when I'm bouncing off of people and when I'm more isolated, I find it not as interesting. So take two minutes to write whatever it is that's feeling, uh, gives your heart some feelings of emptiness, whether it's work or personal. And take another 30 seconds. And we're going to stop here. And there's one more thing to do. And you're going to do this quickly and intuitively, which is in the top half of the chart, you're going to circle what jumps out at you on just intuitively. This is not logically. What could use some attention for you? And this is what came out for me is that there's something about this. So I'm wanting you to tune into your body, not your mind. What jumps out? And this is the other one that jumped out for me. Like, life is short, and I, there's a way I push and I work hard, but this one is jumping out. Summer's coming. So I want you one to three items in the top of the chart, just circle them.
Great. So I'm going to invite you on your own to go back to those three items because that in coaching, we'd start to work with that and to literally just be with each of those items and feel because again, it's not which one's the best one to work with, but they're different. Some will hit different centers of your body. You know, that I'm not enough for me hits a very different place than the I want to adventure place. But it's starting to feel into the chakras, the emotional intelligence, the, you know, where feelings come up to start to say, well, which one of these wants my attention in my life? And it's sometimes very nonlinear on what moves us forward. So that's just an example of a, a journey mapping exercise. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Naraya, for sharing that with us. And I hope those who are watching this, uh, you, you, that you've done the exercise yourself and um, yeah, maybe you uh, got some insight or, or maybe even a breakthrough about uh, what, what you're wanting to, to work on in your life. So, Naraya, maybe you could share with us how people can work with you. If, if someone watching this is like, well, gosh, I, wanna, I want some facilitation in, in doing this work. And I know this is just, we, we've only touched the surface on journey mapping. There's a lot more. You've given us a very small uh, experience. Uh, but yeah, how, how do folks work with you? Thank you, George. So there, my website is journeymapping.net. Um, just so you know, I've been working on getting content online. So I'm starting to vlog and blog, so you can check there. I have some um, recent new input, some of it really uh, targeted towards women, but not all. Some like holistic decision-making, some working with emotions. So you can find content there. I also offer free consultations, and if you get the hit, that we might be a good match, please feel free to sign up. I have a little bit of an inquiry form, but sign up and let's explore if we might be a good match. And the other thing is, is if you like the mapping work, I do have this mapping process that looks at every part from work, relationships, lifestyle. Um, and that's one more thing I'm working with my coaching on trying to get my business online because I've done live workshops with this. Um, and I did one online mapping course, but if you're interested in that, let me know because that might encourage me to make that a priority to get the mapping course online. Wonderful. And one more time, uh, tell us the, the website again. It's journeymapping.net. Uh, Great, journeymapping.net. Awesome. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you so much, Narai, for sharing this with us. I look forward to seeing if any, what any of you thought about this. You know, feel free to comment below if you want to add a public comment or a question for Narai, or you can contact her, of course, through her website. Okay. Thank you, Narai, for your work. Thank you, George. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in.